What are unsaturated carbonyl compounds? Well, we call hexane saturated because it doesn't have any double bonds. 2-hexene is unsaturated because it has a double bond. We could add two hydrogen atoms to reduce that double bond. The same is true for carbonyl compounds. 2-hexanone doesn't have any carbon-carbon double bond. 4-hexene-2-one has a carbon-carbon double bond and we call it unsaturated. In common nomenclature, we sometimes specify where the double bond is by using the alpha, beta, gamma terminology. A carbon next to the carbonyl is called alpha. The carbon further along is beta. The carbon next is called gamma. So this is a beta-gamma unsaturated ketone. When treated with base, ketones undergo exchange of hydrogen atoms at the alpha position. If that base is labeled with deuterium, we can demonstrate that that exchange has actually happened by looking at the deuterium on the alpha carbons. When the exchange goes to completion, all of the hydrogens at the alpha positions, both alpha positions, are exchanged with deuterium. Carbon-carbon double bonds don't cause exchange of hydrogens in the presence of base, so we would predict that the hydrogens alpha to carbonyl would exchange in this molecule and nothing else, and that's exactly right. This unsaturated ketone would incorporate five deuteriums when exchange went to completion. But take a look at the case when we have an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. We actually observed the exchange of six deuteriums, including two at the gamma position. How does that happen? Well, let's take a look at base catalyzed exchange of alpha hydrogens first. The alpha hydrogens are especially acidic because they form a resonance stabilized enolate. So we picture the removal of that hydrogen by base to form a anion that is resonance stabilized. Those electrons can form a double bond there while this pi bond breaks. And it's this second resonance structure that's especially stable because the negative charge is on oxygen. This is an equilibrium with the ketone. And in fact, the ketone is highly favored. And when this goes in the reverse direction, we picture those electrons removing the proton from D2O to replace the hydrogen, only now it's a deuterium. And this process continues. A rapid equilibrium replaces the protons with deuterium at all the alpha positions. Now let's look at the alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. This alpha hydrogen is not removed directly because it's not especially acidic. Base removal of this proton does not form a resonance stabilized anion. The orbital that contains this pair of electrons cannot overlap with the pi system here of the carbonyl because this pi system of the carbon-carbon double bond is overlapping with it. So under the conditions that we're talking about, this equilibrium does not happen. But something else interesting happens. The gamma hydrogen is removed. We're calling this alpha, beta, gamma. When this hydrogen is removed, it puts a negative charge on this carbon. And this has two additional resonance structures. We can picture those electrons forming a double bond there. But this pi bond breaks to put electrons next to the carbonyl. And one more resonance structure would put the double bond here as this carbonyl pi bond breaks to make a normal looking enolate with a negative charge on oxygen. And I put these three resonance structures in brackets to remind us that none of them really exist but again, they're very useful because they show us where the negative charge is. And that shows us where protonation can happen. So a proton can end up at the gamma carbon. Or look at this, at the alpha carbon, the position of the double bond has changed. Of these two unsaturated ketones, the alpha beta unsaturated ketone is more stable. And the one that doesn't have the double bond conjugated with the ketone is less stable. So it's not favored, but nevertheless, it's formed. And as a result, deuterium can end up at the alpha position. So over time, hydrogen exchanges replaced by deuterium at each of the alpha carbons and at the gamma carbon. And so ultimately, we have the more stable alpha beta and saturated ketone, and we have deuterium exchange at both of the alpha positions and the gamma position. At the beta position, there is no deuterium and because the two isomers are in equilibrium that have the alpha-beta and beta-gamma on saturation, it doesn't matter which isomer we start with. 
when we start with the beta gamma unsaturated ketone, we end up with the same product, the alpha beta unsaturated ketone, with the same deuterium exchange pattern. And one last thing, cyclic compounds do exactly the same kind of thing. Treatment of 2-cyclohexenone with deuterium labeled sodium hydroxide and D2O exchanges hydrogens at the alpha position on both sides of the carbonyl and at the gamma position. Again, there is no deuterium at the beta position. And if we start with the beta-gamma unsaturated cyclohexenone, again, we'll make the alpha-beta unsaturated product with the same substitution pattern we saw before. So hydrogen exchange and unsaturated carbonyl compound occurs at the alpha position and the gamma position, but never the beta position. And ultimately, the products are alpha-beta unsaturated, whether you start with the alpha-beta unsaturated ketone or the beta-gamma unsaturated ketone.